Hello, everybody. Welcome to the TuckCast with a splash of bourbon presented by Tuck and Seat Fly Shops with location in Bryson City in Silver, North Carolina. Be sure to follow the crew on Facebook at Tuck and Seat Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and YouTube at Tuck and Seat Fly Shop for the latest information and instructional videos. Be sure to visit TuckFlyShop.com for all things fly fishing in Western North Carolina and beyond. Today's episode is brought to you by Norvice. I got crop in my throat. We need a water boy. <laughs> From their original 1970s prototype to their new legacy stainless steel vice, Norvice has been committed to one thing, efficiency. The company's long-standing slogan, tie better flies faster, truly encompasses what the Norvice fly system does. The good folks at Norvice believe you deserve to tie your flies consistently and in less time because of the ease and benefits engineered into this outstanding tying system. For more information, visit www.norvice.com and check them out on YouTube to see how you can maximize your tying time by relying on the functions and benefits of the tested and true Norvice. I'm your host, Shannon Big Mess Messer, joined by Bobby the Bearded Wonder Bennett, Coach Del Diesel Collins, and Ambassador of Norvice, Braden Miller. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. What's for up? Me. Man, I Dude. swear, we are all wearing the same thing that we recorded the last podcast. <laughs> I think that's just... That's deep. crazy that we all coordinated that accidentally. Deja vu. <laughs> Deja vu. Is that how we do that? That's how we do it. It's called editing. That's editing in the world. Podcast magic. So, Braden, man, welcome to Western North Carolina. Glad you could drop down and uh, talk with us here today. Thank you all for having me. It's awesome down yeah, here. Man, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, man, you got to go do a little fishing yesterday. Oh, yeah. Which is that cool. Was, that was really cool. It's different from everything else I've been doing recently. Yeah, so have done but. get you more into the trout game a little bit oh yeah that was that was fun really fun sweet that's so, good to hear man so what have you been doing prior to getting here um, this week i've been tying flies and like just all my streamers for my orders and all that but for my fishing wise just uh snakehead for my snakehead season been fishing for snakehead both in largemouth bass on tidal rivers in virginia and in the marshes of virginia um recently like a few days before we came down here, uh, went Albacore fishing, false Albacore and Harkers Island, Atlantic Beach er, uh, area, and got on false Albacore, Spanish mackerel, bluefish, and uh, found some uh, found some of the old drum, the big bulls out there in the ocean. That's awesome. That's yep. cool. Hey, explain to everybody the snakehead stuff. Um, I'm sure there's people yes. out there that are like, what is that? So snakeheads are a invasive species from somewhere over in Asia. There's China. <laughs> so, yeah, there's tons. Is that, that kind of like a, is that kind of like the virus? China. 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 Is that like the virus? <laughs> there's tons of species of them, and um, people think they're killing all the fish in the tidal rivers of Virginia, the Potomac, and all these other rivers. And um, I mean, I haven't seen any any difference in any fish species. I've actually seen more bigger largemouth bass than I have ever. And I mean, their primary uh, forge of food is a killifish. And there's, I think uh, VDGIF counted the highest uh, count of killifish there ever has been. Wow, so is that an agency or disease? Uh, <laughs> is there an agency in Virginia? Oh yeah. So you live in Virginia? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. So I'm what living. part of Virginia? Uh, near Richmond. I live in okay. Glen Allen, Virginia specifically. Cool. What's it like up there right now? Uh, I mean, it's been not as cold as it is down here or yeah. and up where uh, Tim is uh, in Delaware. But, I mean, I haven't been back in a good week and a half now. So, man, yeah. he's a road warrior. Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah. heavens, man. Has your yeah. mom been traveling with you that whole time? Oh, yes, sir. My, yeah. my whole family went down to Atlantic Beach for eight days, and then we left Atlantic Beach, drove home four hours, well, and we were home for an hour, hour and a half, and then drove back down here to oh, Silva. <laughs> now, that, that typically down there is with uh, Project Healing Waters event, right? Um, on a normal Albacore year, stuff. the Albacore Festival, oh, yes, sir. right? Yep. Yes, and that's uh, what Chris Thompson and that those guys that organize that. and Yep. Chris Thompson and John Mauser. Uh, yep. Yeah, yes, those sir. are some great guys. Oh, yeah. And all the guides down there are super cool and always helping out with Project Healing Waters and everybody else. You know, Jake Jordan came into the Bryson shop about maybe a month ago, and he just kind of, like, eased in, you know, and you can, you know, <laughs> he had, like, this his fishy shirt on or whatever, probably a hoodie, but oh, yeah. it was a hoodie that said I fish a little bit. <laughs> and so – uh I was like, man, I know this guy somewhere. I've seen him somewhere. I finally just like, man, I, I know we've met 
somewhere. I just he's like, yeah, I'm Jake Jordan. Like, oh, that's right. That's it. And yeah, it just just a real cool cat. And uh, oh yeah, you know helps all those guys out down there with that event. So Jake's great. He's super cool. Always willing to teach you anything. Mm-hmm. Never holds back from anything. Knows I mean, a lot too. He's actually who I fished with for two days down at a uh, couple days ago. That's awesome. Yep. Very cool. So for the folks that. Uh, don't know they don't know about Braden Miller. Braden Miller is, I guess, are you the owner of Miller Time Flies? Is that correct? Or I would is that... say my mom is the owner. There I we just go. so you're the so she's the boss. So, oh, so, yes, so, 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 that's so, it. so let me say that Miss Miller is probably your booking agent. She she does it all. She she, she does it all. She she controls social media, all these things for he you. He just so. shows up, ties flies, and smiles. Man, I tell you, <laughs> he's so, got so good gear. spin the thingy. That's right. So Braden, spin the, is, thingy. Spin, the spinny thingy, and, and she, I think she looks for those pokey thingies. The pokey might, yep. thingies. The pokey and thingies she, there. She has dubbed the bodkin the pokey thingy. It will forever thingy. be known as the pokey thingy. All right. Yep. Maybe we <laughs> should come up with a line of pokey thingies. <laughs> That's I mean, cool. it's perfect. So so Braden uh, obviously is fourteen. For you folks that don't know. Uh, maybe seeing this for the first time. Oh, is he 15 about, now? Are I you 15? I'm sorry. He's 15 now. <laughs> man. Dude, when would you turn 15? Uh, September 6th. Oh, wow. Uh, man, that's just a little while ago, man. Oh, yes, What's it like to be 15? Hey, I, ask him no what it's like to be 50. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. This man. is your. Pretty the cool. only thing I know is there's nobody showing me pictures of their daughters in bikinis while I'm talking. Oh, about. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so he's in I here. Mean, Gra- grandma's yeah. trying to pick Braden up for her granddaughter just a little <laughs> so, while ago. So that's it's, not happening. I'm beyond those days. So that's, <laughs> enjoy it now, Braden. <laughs> Because of 35 more years, that won't happen. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, kind of back to that. Bra- Braden is a phenomenal fly tire. Um, definitely the sky's the limit for Braden. And he does stuff that I never would even try to do. And, and I'd say that as a compliment uh, to you there. But, but, but Braden, obviously you're, you're 15. What led you down the path? What, what got you started where you're at now? Well, I mean, I've, I've been fishing ever since I could walk. So – I learned how to use just a, uh, what's it called, a push button rod, and then I did a spinning rod, learned how to t- do the bait caster. Then after, I want to say it was eight, yeah, it was I started actually fly tying and fishing when I was eight, or take it back, started fly tying when I was, when I was eight. Then the next year, I, I started fly fishing, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to keep learning. I wanted to do something different, but my grandmother was, I actually started fly tying from my grandmother she was downsizing everything that she had and then uh i mean she just gave me an old uh old vice with a kit and i learned from the book and it was i want to say my first fly was a woolly bugger i finished the fly looked terrible cut off my th- cut off cut my thread off and then just whole fly unwound i was like well okay I just and then i just kept tying and trying it learned every fly in that book and then i i don't know it just the the nymphs and the dry flies never really grew to me. It was always like the well, you didn't need to tie them either, right? I mean, oh, I mean, I I tied a few every now and then, but it just it never like grew to me. It wasn't like oh, I I need to fill my box of nymphs up. I wasn't trout fishing. I wasn't wasn't doing anything with that. I I was always just trying to get a bass or something, but. Once I, I I caught my first fish on a fly, I want to say it was a year after I actually started fly fishing, and it was a bluegill on uh, some dry fly, I can't even remember. Mm-hmm. But just that feeling of like, oh, my God, I can't believe that worked. It mm-hmm. just, it was really, really cool. So, awesome. Yep. So, and so then grandmother was really instrumental at that point by giving you the fly tie. Mm-hmm. Did, did grandmother tie flies? or? Oh, yes, sir. Yep, oh, she, okay. She okay. ties flies and fly fish, and then... Uh, she just really gave me the, the things to do it, and I just learned from myself. And then after learning from that book, I went for, went to Instagram and YouTube and learned all these streamer patterns myself, like um, all the Kelly Alps flies and then uh, all the musky flies, like Chris Willen's, uh Double Nickel and Brad Bowen's 747 and uh, everything like that. What do you think about the names of these streamers? <laughs> I mean, you just kind of laid some things out there, like a, you know, 747 and some things. Yeah. But I mean, what have you? What are some streamers you've you've created and named? Um, I've got my one fly, the uh, or I'll take it back. I got two flies. Um, I mean, it's called the Cardiac Arrest. I've, it I, it actually came from another fly I was working on. Hold it up close to the camera yeah. there, if you can, Liam. 
So this is the single hook cardiac arrest. It's got a shank off the back, dragon tail. So the dragon tail holds water and all it has is one single hinge. So when you're stripping this fly, you can two hand strip it and it swims like a game changer veins. It's a dragon tail. You can stop it, you can jackknife it with a hard jerk strip. The thing will glide to the side and you can basically walk it underneath the water. But that's the single hook version, and I've got a double hook version, which has a number four A-Rex Gamers hook in the back with the dragon tail, and then two 15-millimeter uh, Flyman fish binds, and then a, I want to say it's a two-aught uh, B-10S. But it's the same deal, but it, it really, really swims well, and I've caught smallmouth and largemouth on both of them, uh, pickerel, and, I mean, it's it's just done great so far. I'm just still fishing for other species. But it's, it was dubbed the cardiac arrest from a, another fly I was working on previously that I fished with Tim. Mm-hmm. Oh. By who? Oh. Uh, so we got to get credit here. Yeah, so Tim O'Neill dubbed the fly that I was uh, fishing at the time. We were fishing it for striper, and it, I won't go into t- detail about how the fly looked and what it was all, because I'm still messing around with it. But... Um, he named it the cardiac arrest from its glide and kick to the sides, and it, it swam how uh, Kelly Gallup's uh, flatliner swims on its side. So I okay, mean, but yeah. but it swam hook point up, so you can fish it as Pull deep it as you something. want. Yeah, yep, that's cool. Very cool, man. Oh yeah, thank you. What what other stuff do you tie? I, I know you mentioned a lot of stuff, but you've got more sitting over there. So. Oh yeah. Um, well, I'd probably say my favorite fly to tie is this uh, just Blaine Chocolate's Game Changer, really, in any of them. I that thing's tie. like six, seven inches long, probably. Oh, yeah. I think it's seven. With uh, It's tied out of that uh, Fair Flies fly fur, and it's got a rattle in the head and oh, a, uh, a rear hook, and the legs are actually shake uh, it from the mic now. Shake round it. rattles, <laughs> uh, round rubber legs. I can hear it. Oh, yeah. That's all reverse tied cra- uh, fly fur. Wow. Huh. So why is it that you enjoy the, the game changers? Um, they're just fun to tie, and it's always a. I mean, it's it's a different. It's a always a different st- step, but always the same step because you're just repeating the process, just making it larger and just building it up in size. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I don't know. It's just. And then when I fish them, it's, they, I mean, just watching them swim and tracking through the water and then watching a fish come up and eat them, it's, it's crazy. Do you have a uh, fly tester that you're testing these in, or is it just to go out to a pond? Uh, I've got a uh, flyman fly tester, and, I mean, I, I would rather uh, test flies in the water fishing them. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I'll tie a bunch up, and then I'll go out and fish them, and if, if they swim how I want them to, I'll just keep doing different things to them, like... Um, that one's got the craft fur with the uh, or the fly fur with the uh, flex resin on the head and rubber legs. This one's actually a weedless game changer that I tied, and it's got a mop, uh, mop tail on the back, Kelly Gallup belly bumper hook, and it's keeled a certain way that I've got it with rubber legs. And I mean, it's I fished it a couple times and I'm still working on it. Tw- I want to tweak it a little bit, but it's just something different that I want to try. But so do you have a name for that one yet? Since it's kind of not yet. Um, I've only posted a, a picture of it once, but yeah, it's called it's under construction. That's it. <laughs> yep. It's under, under construction. construction. Uh, under construction with a mop fly tail. Oh, Check yeah. that out, man. Oh, that that mop tail make makes a uh, game changer swim really well. Does it really? Oh, yeah. really? Hmm. Holds a little bit of water in it, so it really uh, makes. So makes you the whole see fish, that you fished this fly before? Uh, I want to say a couple times for a snakehead and all that. Hmm. Mm. That's cool. So man. that means it's used. What do you give for it? Just <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes negotiation. Brayden, be quiet. That's a one of a kind. That's a one. Uh, now you're talking. That now the, you're learning. That's the now prototype, right? That is that's the prototype. That's right. I, I've, drug, I've drugged that thing over top of Hydrilla and through lily pads and uh, uh, that pencil grass and sawgrass. And it, it's. So the question is has anything followed it? You gotten any. I uh, I think I had uh, one snakehead follow it, but that's yeah. I haven't had any eats on it yet, so I don't know. Maybe I have to. So, I want to add a rattle somehow. But. TBD. Oh yes, sir. Yep. That's awesome, dude. Um, so that's your favorite fly to tie, but like, 
the the game changer style of things. So mm-hmm. you're just trying to build off of that, and like like that, you've obviously mm-hmm. taken a game changer, and now you've like changed the ends of it. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, in the sir. center. So is that kind of your goal? Is to find like a different different way in every game changer to? I guess uh, that, and I mean, I. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I thought my mom was talking to me. Um, <laughs> that and my cardiac arrest, I want to I want to do some different things with it, maybe add something to it, but um, I don't know. It's. Are you like a painter, man, where it's like the painting's never perfect and you just like got to keep messing with it? Pretty much. You're never I, satisfied? Until it's done, yeah. perfect, and yeah. That'll get you in trouble. Yeah, it will. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. So what's your favorite species? You, you mentioned several, but, like, what you fished in your life, what would be, like, if this is all I could fish the rest of my life, what would you pick right now? And obviously in five yeah. years that's probably going to change, but. Man, I don't know. Um, freshwater. It could be, yeah, do yeah, fresh and I, salt. I'd say freshwater would be a snakehead because, I mean. Really? Oh, it's it's all visual. I've never fished for snakeheads, so. It's all visual. I yeah. mean, you watch them track it from 10 feet away and eat a fly on top of the water. It, it's crazy. I mean, that or watching a game changer swim. or um, There's a season for them when they spawn called fry ball season. And Sounds when, good, fry ball. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like so, something uh, Smithfields would serve. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it does. Hey, food got involved. Hey, you, know you, got Smithfields. Got <laughs> you know about Smithfields? Yes, sir. Oh, oh yeah. Winner. <laughs> I didn't know about Smithfields. <laughs> I thought it was Sorry. just something you bought in the frozen yeah. food section. What, what about the fry ball? We start so, talking about food, we get yeah, excited. Yeah. Oh, yeah, snakeheads, yeah. Continue. Right. So snakeheads, when they spawn, they uh, the the babies just come out. And, I mean, they're real small. Like, when they are when they first hatch, they're like a grain of rice. And they're, I mean, they, you know how, like, a bait ball is pushed up by fish, like stripers or yeah. out yeah, 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 yeah. and it's like anchovies balled up and, or menhaden. That's how they always are, just floating around or swimming on top of the water. Mm-hmm. Huh. And the male and the female patrol around them until I want to say it was two weeks till they're about two weeks of age, and then the the parents go away because they're <coughs> old enough to fend by themselves. Yeah, but you can you can catch the male and the female off the fry ball like a, like a bedding bass or something like that. Yeah, Thirty. But the yeah, if if you're either if you spook them. Or if you get too close to them, they see you, or they don't want to act at the fly. I mean, I've thrown into a fry ball, and I mean, it lands right in front of the, the mother's or the father's face, and they do nothing at it. Yeah. And I've also had it where you're casting at them, and they track the fly in the air, and they eat it once it lands. Wow. Really? Oh, wow. they, yeah, they're, they're, they're cool. Yeah. Excuse me. Me and Justin found some snakeheads down east. Really? Hey, turn your mic on. Sorry, me and Justin found some snakeheads down east in Pine Tops area. All that lease he was on, and it's we didn't know what they were. Scared the bejesus out of us. <laughs> it did me anyway. I mean, we hooked up a few. Yeah. But I saw them, like, doing that thing where they uh, make the water go crazy. Mm-hmm. It's like, what is in this? It was, yeah. I was ready to get out. <laughs> so what's your favorite saltwater one? Saltwater? Oh, my. Um, Man, I don't know. I Probably false albacore, oh, yeah. just because yeah. they're run. Yeah. So, have you I done mean, anything like down in the Caribbean, like tarpon or anything yet, or is it? I've hooked up to two tarpon. Okay, so I've you've loved. done that. So you're comparing yeah. that to but tarpon. Okay. Both have been at night, so I don't know. I, I've never done the daytime thing for tarpon. Yeah, so. it was on the fly at night. Uh, one on fly at night, Dang. and then one I was just catching snapper behind below a bridge near our house, and I was just yeah. it was with a one ounce jig, and I was just catching snapper, and then all of a sudden. It's like a brick wall hit it and it took off. Yeah, <laughs> and that, that awesome. was thirty pound braid with a fifteen pound leader. I had no chance. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's awesome, man. Wow. So Albuquerque, man, we got to go do the Albuquerque thing. I mean, it's, just, yeah. it's tough for us. It's such a busy time of year in well, October. Jake told me. I asked him that because I said, man, I want to get down there and I'd love to be able to help with the Healing Waters event there. It's just now getting. Well, that's really what he's saying. November is actually better than October. Yeah. So. It, it might be possible one day. So we're just going to close next November and go? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody go down? <laughs> yeah. Ray said close. <laughs> yeah. Right, he pay all the bills. He pay all the bills. He said, yeah, yeah, just go. It's yeah, no right. problem. Just Absolutely. Just pay yeah, all the bills like that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah I would definitely try it at least once because yeah. it's, it, it's an experience. It's really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's I, like I definitely... 10 and 12 weights, right? I mean, it's like some serious um, weight rods my here. My favorite need. rod for, like, fish from 
five to ten pounds, ten to five to twelve pounds, I would say, is a nine weight. And then anything bigger, a ten weight is really good for them. And yeah. then like a bit like the big big ones, and an eleven and twelve weight is probably needed. So this would be like the Ferrari of saltwater, in terms of size versus how hard they pull. I mean, yeah. oh. Yeah, it's incredibly I mean, efficient oh, fish. I've, I've had a five pounder take, I mean, a ton of drag on a nine weight. And wow. I mean, just dig under the boat. All you can do is hold the rod under or walk around the boat. And yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. They're awesome. Is, can we see Jarrett in a photo? Uh, I know. I switched it to a solo. Okay. Uh, <laughs> say, say, hey, folks, that's Jarrett. The, the <laughs> shop is open. So that's Dale's right. hopping up to help with some stuff real that's fast. Right. Absolutely. So, so um, those, I'm looking at these flies right here. So what weight? Uh, or would we th be using to throw some of these drives oh, yeah. right here? And, so, yeah. uh, oh, my bad. It's all right. <laughs> That's all right, man. We all hit the mic every now and then. <laughs> That's all right. So, I mean, this seven inch changer, I, I, I can throw them on a seven weight, but comfortably with an eight or a nine weight. Um, this single hook cardiac arrest, I, I've thrown them on a five weight. Really, really fun on a seven weight. And, uh, I mean, yeah, five. Four and a half to like six inch game changers is like really good on a seven weight, super easy on an eight weight, and um, this one here actually it, I tied this one for them for the bull reds and all, but it's got a rattle in it, and um, I'm actually dredging like we mark them on the finder and you drop your uh, drop down the line. It's I'm fishing a 700 grain sinking line. Wow! And you just want it to sink as fast as you can and mm. get down on them. That's cool, man. Mm -hmm. So how did the idea for starting Miller Time Flies, like, happen? Like, how did that – you started yeah. Time Flies when you were, what you say, eight? Yes, sir. Ish? Yep. Yeah. So how did that evolve into now you've got stickers and T-shirts and all that stuff, and you're an ambassador for Norvice? So – Like, give us that story yeah. of those okay. last, like, seven years. How did that – All right. So I want to say I started going to the fly shows when I was – nine or ten yeah i want to say ten so my local home show the virginia uh fly fishing and wine festival yeah. in doswell virginia um i would go up there with my grandparents and all that and they would walk around with me and i would always bring my little fly box full of full of flies that i tied and i would walk around and i'd get advice and feedback and have them have everyone critique my flies and what i could do better or what i'm doing and like I showed them the Lefty, uh, Lefty Cray, Bob Clouser, Chuck Kraft, and I mean, everybody at that, every booth that I stopped at. And uh, they know a little bit. <laughs> just a few. Just a little bit, yeah. Um, I s want to say, I want to say it was when I was 11, I stopped at the Norvice booth and showed them my flies and showed uh tyler o'neill one of my flies and then he showed it to some of somebody else and they showed it to tim and uh they asked me if i had ever tied on norvis i never had and I, I jumped up there and ended up tying a couple flies and then did an interview with tfo that same day and then tyler did a uh instagram live of me tying on the vice and then from then i met rick pope the same day the uh owner of tfo right yep. yes sir yep and then uh they asked me what what fly rod I, I cast those big flies on. I said, but TFO, uh, I want to say it was BBK 8 weight. And then they asked me if I knew who that was out in the crowd. I said, uh, no. And then I was like, oh, yes, I do. And it was Rick Pope. And then I met uh, Tim. He came from a demonstration he did. So from then I met Tim. And then Tim said to go to the Lancaster show and tie at their booth again. And then from then I got – bought my first really nice vice from them um, i think a kid just got hit i think so <laughs> i know that sound <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah get that in there too there we go that's an elbow so oh, so yeah. essentially when he asked you what rod you throw those big flies with you, you had the right answer I, I guess so. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Make it so. a 50 50 there, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, I I bought my, I, my parents actually bought me my first really nice vice, which was the Norvice from Tim. And I I was tying on a Renzetti Traveler, not the one with the cam, but the one with the knob on mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And um, that's what I, what I was using before I, I got my Norvice. And before I even got the Renzetti, those Thompson Model A's, I went through yeah. like 
five of them because I broke them from putting those from putting bigger hooks in. Yeah, yeah, they just can't handle that size of a hook. Oh, yeah, and they started just blowing up on me, so. Yeah. And after tying on the Norvice for, I want to say, a year or two, I became an ambassador or team member for them, and then a junior ambassador and then an ambassador for them. And, I mean, ever since that, it's grew, and I sold my first fly to one of the Norvice uh, ambassadors, and from then it just kept growing and growing and so are you actively like selling flies online or just when mm -hmm. you go to shows yes sir i've got uh, when i go to shows i've got uh I, I have a booth and i'll tie at the norwest booth and my booth and normally it'd be like right next to each other so i'll be selling selling flies at my booth and then i've also got my website uh millertimeflies.com and the name came from just asking everybody in my family and tim and tyler and everybody else uh, what they thought the name should be, and my dad said Miller Time Flies. I was like, Oh, that sounds pretty good. My mom, no, it does, man. It it, it works. It works. Oh yeah. And my Miller mom, time. my mom said no for a while, and then she's like, Yeah, it works. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you so, had to talk her into it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, yeah. yes sir. I had this strange feeling that she was the one that came up with it, but <laughs> I guess not. For for a little while, she was against it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can understand yeah. that. So, how does it work when? Do you just like have back stock of stuff you tied and somebody goes on your website and says, hey, I want that, that, and they order it and you just send it? Or do you actually have I, to tie it as it's ordered? I had a few that I did that with, and I mean, I don't know. I didn't like how that worked. It becomes like work yeah. is what it becomes. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how I have it set up, I mean, 99% of my stuff is through custom orders. Yeah. So I've got a, a tab for on my website for custom orders, and they'll go in, they'll type whatever they want. I want six game changers, three white, three black, and then I want them with two hooks, and I want three of them to have dumbbell eyes, and I want the three to be the olive ones, and then I'll do that. And whatever length they want or whatever they want. I mean, it could be a clouser, it could be a, a, a woolly bugger, and yeah. I would do it. Nothing, nothing but streamers. I've nothing but streamers right now. I, I'll do uh, micro game changers, the nymphs, and 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 the original micro game changers, but no nymphs and drives. Why not? <laughs> I don't know, man. They, hey, those gotta ask you the hard question. Those Why not? Those oh, yeah. weren't working yesterday. Nah. <laughs> 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 they work. It's just. <laughs> I don't know. It's yeah. just it's what you like, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like I enjoy tying yeah. the bigger stuff. Not that I was like I, I hate tying them. I hate tying. I don't. Not that I don't hate tying the nips and all that. I'll tie them occasionally sure. for like my box, but it's just it's not what I like to tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's understandable, man. Yeah. Yes, I mean, sir. you had that fly you were working on first thing this morning. You started yesterday. Oh yeah. And those yeah. things take you a while. Oh yeah, those game certain game changers can take forever. I've got one that's. I want to say it's 13 inches long, and it's all dubbing loops, and it's got two hooks, a four-odd in the back, and an eight-odd up front, and I tied it. It's my personal one. I tied it for uh, Kingfish off the wrecks and Atlantic Beach and all that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't sell them. Like how, how, how long do you think it took you to tie that? That one took, like, three and a half hours. Hey, it was man, man. It's all dubbing loops with uh, that bait fish emulator flash, so it's all cutting, throwing into the dubbing loop. Yeah. Then trimming and then finding the size that I need. And Man, that's, that's, it had a ton of shanks in it. That's some dedication. Did you yeah. do it all at once, or is that something that you kind of tie and come back to? And oh, that was all one. You just one sat there setting. and did it. Yep. And that's like being wow. a surgeon. It is. You know, just like it's phenomenal. Don't stop. Keep it's, going. It's phenomenal. How, how do you manage? How do you manage being Braden Miller? Braden Miller, a 15 year old. Braden Miller, a teenager student, and Braden Miller, a fly tire. So, actually, this year it works out really well with uh, the online schooling and all that. So, I was already planning on doing the online schooling with uh, some, not ran through my school, but through, ran through the state and all that. So, I'm doing an, a different online school than that's ran through the state. So, mine is self-paced instead of having to get into a class with the teacher or whatever or go into school. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's... But mine's all learning by myself and doing tests and quizzes and assignments and reading it all and watching videos and Man. everything. Wow. Yep. And from that, I mean, I still I still talk to all my friends and all that, sure. hang out every now and then. But uh, I just, I don't know. I just enjoy fishing and everything a whole lot more. And I planned on, I was going to do a lot of the shows with Tim and maybe doing some on the West Coast. 
Yeah, so uh, you need to have a little bit of freedom in the schedule to yep. to make it work. But yeah, this year I don't think that's gonna happen. So who who is the uh, driving force behind your website? Uh, I would say my mom. Yeah, I mean. I don't see everything that goes and gets put on or gets put in there from everybody else and all that. But, I mean, I would not be able to do any of this without my mom, my dad, yeah. and everybody. And yeah, it always takes support, man. Oh, yes, sir. We wouldn't have the shop if it wasn't for our, our families and people like Shannon and stuff like that. It definitely – it always takes support. It's tough to do be the one-man show. You can't be an island. That's the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. nope, there's, it's just impossible. Yes, sir. So, so you've seen a lot of lot of good stuff. Everything you hear is talking is very positive, very positive, very positive. And you've you've really, in in a lot of ways, been in the fly fishing industry. Let's because you really have for for some time, and you're young. So you've seen a lot of good stuff. What's one thing that that maybe you've seen that that wasn't so good that may have caught you off guard or or something maybe you'd like to see changed? Maybe a two part question. Yeah. Out of this. Man, I don't know. Um, hmm. I, I Dude, really, this kid's all smiles. I don't think there's too much negative know, going on here. I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I really, I haven't really thought about that. Did you, you know really I mean? maybe feel like because you were maybe younger that you weren't taken as seriously as maybe someone else who was established? Uh, mm. Maybe not. I maybe, mean, I'm just kind of. I mean, maybe in the beginning, but yeah. I mean, if you can just prove yourself and right. what you can do. Yeah. I mean. And handle the stress and being under pressure from everybody and tying up shows and all that. I mean, I mean yeah, you had to get that, used to people standing there staring at you for, <laughs> you know, eight hours a day while you're sitting at one of those shows. Oh, oh, you know. It was stressful. And, I mean, in the beginning it was like, I'm not going to lie, I freaked out in the beginning. Yeah. But, I mean, you just you get accustomed to it and you yeah. just, I mean, now it's just like nothing. It's yeah. just, right. It, it is amazing how you can grow and, and, and everybody goes through it. You, you've probably done it a little younger than most people, but... You know, I, I think a lot of people when they get into a new job or something like that, you know, they're that shy person because they're scared to interact with the public. So you're kind of ahead of the game in that. You know that you can pretty much talk to anybody now. Um, <laughs> even even a grandmother trying to give away her granddaughter to you, <laughs> standing here in the shop. So yeah, you handle yeah. that pretty good. Yeah, you handle <laughs> you it handle well. that pretty well. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway. When yeah. she's yelling, I got bikini pics to show I was you. Like whoa, <laughs> where all this whole shop went? Whoa. <laughs> I was like, whoa, <laughs> man, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, so so what What would you, obviously you got a different perspective than I think I do. Maybe Bobby and everybody else in here, what is something maybe you'd like to see changed uh, in the future, maybe make it better, or maybe something that's not there now that you have an idea? I mean, there. I mean, there's already a ton of people bringing the sport to children and kids nowadays. I mean, there's, I from what I've seen on even just social media and all that, there's a ton more kids getting into it and all that. And there was, I mean, I don't know. I, I couldn't even count now. In the beginning, I, I really didn't see anybody, any other younger people on it. Like, yeah, I would say probably from the age of 15 and down, I really didn't see anybody on social media. Maybe I didn't see them or anything. But yeah. I definitely see it growing in, like, the whole – as like all age groups getting into it and everything like that. Like I've got my younger brothers into it and all oh, this is just exposure and showing it to them. And yeah, I mean, just spin the thing. Yeah. So, so what helped you learn to tie flies the most? Was it, did you watch a ton of YouTube or was it going to these fly shows and talking to people? Like, what do you yeah. think was the biggest benefit when you were doing that? Because it's nice to yeah. be able to ask questions oh. and get feedback oh, yeah. rather than and just watching a video. That and seeing it in person and actually, like, may, I mean, you, maybe you can't Ooh. ask the question that you want to ask to the person that's doing the video or whatever. Yeah. Like, something like that. But for me personally, I would watch a video. I would tie it. Whether I didn't have the right materials or whatever, I would substitute it with something. But trial and error for me. It was just trial and error. Yeah. I... I my game changers in the beginning, whew, they looked rough, like real <laughs> bad. <laughs> they all do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, but just after watching the videos, then tying them, then trial and error. Yeah. And then after trial and error, it still looked halfway decent. I I mean, learning it from the actual person who did it, like at the shows, going seeing. Them I mean, did you sit down with Blaine Chocolate and say, "Hey, man, show me, show me some game changer I, I stuff." Took, I took Blaine's class, and then at the tying symposium, I sat next to Blaine 
or, or on purpose you were like hey what's up <laughs> no I, like, I had a booth right next to it <laughs> yeah. can i get yeah. you a coffee mr chocolate yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but i mean i i just sat there the whole day and i tied my own flies and i would watch blaine for a while and then i would ask questions and everything and i mean every uh, popovics and everybody mm-hmm. popovics was across the way and i mean just everybody being there just being at the shows even if i wasn't tying yeah i, I was always learning from that's the thing if you want to be the best you got to watch the best and see what they do and ask them yeah yes, you know learn yes. from them and then try to improve what you learned even yeah. like go above and beyond and put a mop, uh, mop fly on the back of a game changer <laughs> i mean seriously that's what it takes it's on somebody... the back of a dragon tail yeah game changer yeah there you go yeah <laughs> that's right yeah the like triple all threat it. so it's uh yeah. you know all that stuff Ooh. so that's what's cool about it what the triple threat this could be the name of of the game changer, yeah. Ooh. Could be. Oh. So what yeah. uh, what would you advise anybody just getting into fly tying? Like, what's the hardest thing to overcome? Is it whip finishing? <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would learn your. I mean, I've got my whip finish down right now. I mean, I don't even use. I don't like using the tool. I mean, the tool for me. So you do it with your fingers. Oh yeah. yes, sir. The tool for me just it. It seems like it just gets in my way. Yeah. I, but. I can get it for like the smaller stuff, but with this bigger stuff, it's, I don't know. It's just, for me, I, it feels like it gets in my way. But if you can get that down quick, because for this with the knots, I mean, or your whip finish, I mean, if you can whip finish a little bit faster, you can actually, I've actually noticed like I could get this done quicker yeah. rather than just spending my time and actually doing it all. But I would just say, I don't know, just ask as many questions as you can. I yeah. mean, don't feel like you're being annoying to somebody, but like, just. Well, that's right, and they're all questions that somebody's had before. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I mean, it's it's that's that's just what I mean. Like, yeah. like we say, nobody was born with a fly rod in their mouth, so yeah, yeah. You got to start yep. somewhere. Yeah. Yes, so. sir. Very cool, yep. man. Y'all got any more questions for him? What'd you think about small creeks? That was cool. That was yeah. really cool. Is that I, like I your first time it. fishing like a small creek like that? What you did I, I yesterday? I mean, I fished brookies before, and okay. like yeah. okay. brookies and a few like wild rainbows, but like that's I did that like three times. But yeah. that was that you got to really come back cool. and fish some more. Oh, mm-hmm. I would we'll love take to. you to some different spots, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can uh, maybe uh, you can try out some of those uh, flies. I mean, some. Uh, I mean, there's yeah. some big browns yeah, that would uh, eat some, some of them things, man. Right I think. I, I would love maybe not the pink, 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 but you know. Some some of those more natural like whites and creams and tans you have. Like, Can you maybe? imagine that in a lake? I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, what's in the lake? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's only like four hundred eighty some feet deep. I mean, yeah. what's in the lake, right? That's it. Oh yeah, well, maybe octopus. Yeah, you now. can bring that seven hundred grain line and we Sweet. we can go throw it in Fontana <laughs> oh, and yeah. see what's in the bottom down there. Think that bad, you know? Oh yeah. Wow. So yes, I am on a mission to catch a catfish in in Fontana. Like, you know, on a river intentionally. Yeah. Oh. Catfish I've, awesome. I've caught catfish on the fly in the lake, but it was a total accident. I like eating oh, catfish. If you want to catch catfish, you can come up to uh, Virginia. Uh, I found a flat on this river that we fish. And there you go. It's a hunt, like 100 yards long, but it's all like three to four and a half feet deep. Mm-hmm. But at a certain time, at a certain tide, I've noticed when I'm snakehead fishing there, you just see bait popping and fish slashing mm-hmm. around. But it's just a big school of uh fat blue cats like big school and i want to say the biggest one that i've seen was probably 20 pounds and they're eating these shad they're just going like whale sharks oh yeah just destroying so Um, a lot of the rivers it sounds like you fish still have a tidal change in mm -hmm. some aspect yeah Yeah. Yeah. because you're on the virginia coast mostly yeah it's all like marshland so it's like brackish still yeah still has a little bit of salt in it so yeah it's that's That's cool man I mean, that's like a different world to us. Yeah. You know, we always talk about salt water, but like the brackish water stuff is kind of a totally different world too because mm-hmm. you do have so many species that live in that. So maybe we need to go there and fish. Oh, yeah. Come on up. <laughs> we can in January. Yeah. Yeah. For The the fly show is happening, so. Uh, Our, snakeheads won't eat when it's cold. Yeah. Well, they will, but I know guys that have called them in December on like while perch fishing, mm-hmm. but like small jigs. Is that like catching a – Three pound bass on Deep Creek while you're trout fishing? Is, that, is that the surprise you have on your face when you? Probably. Maybe. Yeah. John Costa. I haven't done it yet, but uh, if you can get there when it's warm out, that's when you like want to be there. August and 
Oh yeah. man, that's when it's oh, like it's hot, 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 muggy, and humid. And that's hot. what they like. That's when we don't want to leave the mountains. <laughs> yeah, <know? laughs> that's when it's <laughs> oh, yeah. like so that. I'm, I'm good. To stay in the mountains. That's Wake right. up at four o'clock in the morning, get down to the river, and then it heats up to about ninety degrees midday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then that. <laughs> oh man, dog. <laughs> <nuts. Yeah>. Oh. <laughs> man. The dog. The dog beat gnats. I say beep. D i c t h. <laughs> yeah. He knows the Tim knows what we're talking about. <laughs> oh my! He knows. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh. oh man! Well, cool deal, man. We appreciate you sitting down with us. Yeah, thank um, you. And thanks so for much. coming to the the demo day with Norvice, yeah. man. It was cool having you guys here. So oh, yeah. we really appreciate it. That was it was really cool. Today. Yeah, we'll yeah, definitely man. try to see if we can't set it up again and do it again, and hopefully, it'll be a year without COVID. And we'll have that many more people in the shop when oh, yeah. we do it. So, yeah. so very cool. Oh. Yeah, I think we're. Good. Just just remember the next time you come, just be ready for grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we advertise you're gonna be here, she's coming back, I bet. Uh, she, <laughs> she'll be here. Granddaughter might be yeah, here if we know the case, man. She'll be dragging somebody in the door. Some hashtag. I mean, that going could be, on. That might now be, we got weird. That might, got, <laughs> that might be some connection for uh could be connection for Charleston. A big shout out to the folks in Paducah, Kentucky, by the way. Just to, Hey uh, Paducah. Hey Paducah. Appreciate those folks up there listening and not to All be confused around. with Macarena. <laughs> <laughs> That's been a while since I did the Macarena with it. Paducah. Uh, um, yes, Paducah. All right, man. It's been a great time today, and we want to ha- shit us. <laughs> shoot, shoot us. <laughs> I was clean, I promise. <laughs> Special. We're talking about Paducah. When you're 50, things don't sound the same. Oh, no losing control, Shannon. <laughs> Special shout out to thank you to Norvice for making this episode possible. To get folks at Norvice believe you deserve to spend consistency and efficiency out of your time system. With time on Norvice, you will quickly see the benefits of time flies while physically spinning the vice. This is your Marco feature that I strongly recommend watching on the Norvice YouTube channel. There are a lot of great rotary vices on the market, but only the Norvice spins the hook. It's for this reason that it's been said that the Norvice is the most innovative fly tying system on the market. Never again do you have to wind the slack thread onto your bobbin spool. The Norvice Auto Bobbin does the work for you. For more information, visit www.norvice.com and check them out on YouTube and say you can maximize your tying time by relying on the functions then benefits of the tested and true Norvice. For Coach Del Diesel Collins, the Bobby the Bearded Wonder, our special guest, Braden Miller, this is Big Mess signing out. Sweet.